second to warm up your hands, rub them up and down, get them nice and warm, just like I showed you in the last video. Also, I would suggest take a second and uh, practice a four finger exercise, wherever you feel most comfortable, just to get your fingers moving and get them fluid. You can also practice those two chords, uh, the E minor and the A uh, from the last video as well. Um, if you've already done that, then we'll just get started and just jump right into it. First, I'm gonna show you a variation on the four finger exercise. Uh, quite simply, uh, in the previous video, we ascended the string, we picked the spot with our first finger, and we went uh, first finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger, and we did that all the way on each string down the fretboard, or across the fretboard this way, and then we went backwards, go from our pinky to our first finger. So we're gonna do the same thing, uh, or the same idea, but now we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna start with our pinky finger on our low E string, our top string, moving the moving this way uh, across the fretboard, we're going from our pinky to our first, and then the opposite when we move back uh, across the fretboard this way, uh, from our first to our pinky. So I am gonna put my first finger uh, at the fifth fret. Um, I have a dot there, it's easy for me to track. Um, of course, you can just work out anywhere. I suggest finding a dot to line your first finger up with. So I know that my first finger is at the fifth fret, so uh, five, six, seven, eight. I'm starting on the eighth fret with my pinky finger. Position your first finger nice and close to the top of that fret so that when you move that nasty pinky finger that, that tends to fight you, um, you're not stretching so much. So again, starting with my pinky finger on the eighth fret, I am moving down the string. Eighth fret, seventh fret with my ring, sixth fret with my middle, and uh, fifth fret with my first finger. So um, we're going eight, seven, six, five, or pinky, ring, middle, index. And now once that's done, I'm moving down to the next string and doing the same thing across. Now, once I get to my last string, my bottom string, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And now I'm gonna go move from my first to my middle, to my third, to my pinky. My first finger comes up to the next string. And then I ascend that string while moving across the fretboard. I'm done with that string, so my first finger change the string, and it's the one I'm watching. So once I'm done, it's my first finger that gets me ready for the next string. All right, so we're gonna keep it at a fairly reasonable tempo, maybe about here. Play along with me. Um, try to keep up as best you can. If not, find your own tempo, but like I said, make sure you try to keep it in time. Uh, if it's slow, that doesn't matter. It's just uh, it's important to keep it in time because uh, otherwise you, you, you practice taking pauses in your exercise. All right, so here we go. Starting on the uh, in the fifth position, my pinky finger on the eighth fret. Three, two, one, and pinky, third, middle, first. My pinky moves down. Watch my pinky move down to the next string. Entire time with my right hand, try my best not to look at my right hand. Go pause for a second. All right now, we're going to ascend. Start with our first finger. Going first, middle, third, pinky. My first finger moves up. Okay, I'm done with that string. My first finger moves up. I'm ascending. Each finger goes down. My first finger moves up. Keeping my first finger nice and close to the top of that fret so that it's easier for me to reach with my other fingers. Okay, on to some chords. In the last video, we looked at E minor and A. Um, e minor, just a quick review, is your, your uh, first and second finger on the second fret of your A and your D string, of your fifth and fourth string. And uh, all the other strings are left open, as in they don't have any fingers on it. So, and with this chord, you strum all the strings. Now, to move from the E minor to the A chord, you're going to sort of, you're still going to keep that E minor shape, and you're going to move those fingers together. Imagine that they're kind of stuck together like glue. And you're going to move them down one string each. So I've now moved these two fingers. From the fifth and sixth, sorry, fifth and fourth string to now the fourth and third string. 
And the last step is my uh, ring finger. I'm going to add to the fret behind it. So it's a really tight cord. All we have three fingers across the second fret. Right, and uh, with that we also lose a string that we strum, right? We start from the A string, the uh, fifth string, and we strum down from there. So, to move, and to move back, you're going to keep those two fingers together, get rid of your ring finger, and then move those two fingers up one string. since the last lesson you may notice in this sorry in your new to guitar you'll notice that that one finger can get uh, a little weird like it, it doesn't listen as well as the first two um so think of it as a hierarchy uh these two fingers uh which work really well together um they get to move down to the next string first and then you can add the third finger afterwards um, especially if you're finding it difficult to try and put them down all at the same time, all three fingers. Um, so think of it sort of like a hierarchy. Strum it four times, move down to the next string, and then add the third finger. What you don't want to do is stop strumming, keeping that arm going. So um, let me just give you an example of that. So I'm keeping my arm going. So now I'm going to add another chord, I'm going to add the D chord. Um, similarly uh, to the E minor and the A, your first and um, your first and second finger, your index and, and middle finger, are going to find themselves on the second fret of the guitar. But something different happens. Um, on the E minor, they're tight together. On an A chord, they're tight together. But on a D chord, they're going to split on either side of the B string, your first and your middle finger on the second fret of the G and the E string, your third and first string. So if I was coming from an A chord, what I would do is I get rid of my third finger and then I get these two fingers to drop down and split on either side. So take a second to try that. You're going to get rid of that third finger going to just sort of disappear and then these and then your two fingers are going to go uh, move down a string but they're going to split on either side of the B string so you have a third so you can try that without even strumming just moving those two fingers down like that or across I should say now once you've done that add that third finger is going to go right between them but on the third fret of the B string so you what it almost looks like if you look at the diagram almost like a, a triangle um, so the frets that I'm using are the second fret of your G string, the third fret of your B string, and then the second fret of your E string. And uh, to, you know, and another thing is that, uh, like the A chord, uh, we lose a uh, we lose a string to strum. So we're only strumming the bottom four strings. That's from your open D. So we have D, G, B, E. So D and the ones below. So moving from the A to the D, again, you're going to get rid of your third finger. These two fingers uh, drop down a string and split, and then you add your third finger after the fact. Another way to do this is that you can sort of keep your third finger on the string, but you sort of release the fret. And that third finger can actually slide up as these two fingers split on either side. So you don't actually have to take the third finger off. However, as I was saying, the third finger uh, is, can be a, sort of complicated. Um, and it may want to just pop off, so that's okay. So you're gonna let it pop off. You're gonna drop those two fingers down and add the third finger, all right? And 
and you strum the bottom uh, four strings. So once you feel comfortable with that, you're getting a good sound, remembering to uh, make sure that your first and middle finger um, are as close to that the top of that fret as you can, so you get a good sound. It's too low, it starts to buzz. And so for the first exercise, we're gonna move from an A to a D chord. Start on an A chord. So your first and middle finger are on the second fret of your A and D string. You're strumming all the strings, all right? Now, looking at your left hand, you're going to drop those two fingers and they're gonna split on either side of the B string. And then your third finger is gonna add it to the third fret of that B string. And now you're strumming less strings. So, with no time in mind, or sorry, no counting in mind, just strum as many times and then Make the switch. Your first and middle finger uh, split on either side of the B string. Now moving back, look at your index finger as to where it's got to go, and then let it guide your other finger back into place on the second fret. Switch. sure you'll recognize it pretty quickly. Um, we're going to play your two middle strings. We're going to play D and G. So make sure you get your right hand ready because those are the, those are the two strings that we'll be playing this, this on. Now, just like the E minor chord, we're going uh, to glue these, our first and middle finger together. And uh, just to know that whenever we play a fret, these two fingers will be together at the same time playing the same fret. So, um, for example, we're going to be playing the third fret of, uh, of these two strings. So you'll find, just like an E minor chord, these two fingers side by side. So, lastly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh show you the song, but I'm going to use numbers. And when I say the numbers, I'm talking about the frets. And we're going to be just using those two strings, and the numbers are going to be going up and down the fretboard for this play. So... The first thing you're going to play is zero. So now when you think zero, zero means open. So that means you're going to play these two strings open. Zero. Now with those two fingers, you're going to put them on the third fret of your D and your G string. Similar shape to like an E minor, where the two fingers are side by side. And you're going to play uh, those two strings again. So now I have my first and middle finger that are on the third fret, and we played strum the same two strings. Zero, three, and now we're going to move up to the fifth fret with those two fingers. So I'll review that again. It goes zero, three, five. Maybe you already guessed what this is. Okay, the next set of numbers. Start with open again. Zero, three, now six. So we have 
zero, three, five. Next turn, zero, three, six, five. Okay, now the last sequence of numbers is gonna be zero, three, five, going backwards, three, zero. So maybe you've already recognized this riff. This is Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. Sort of a staple when you're first learning guitar and can actually be a lot of fun to play, uh, especially when you're first starting out. So again, I'll go through those numbers again. Zero, three, five. Zero, three, six, five. Zero, three, five, three, zero. So now I'm gonna find the tempo. Okay, now we're going to try it at a bit of a tempo. Um, not too fast. Play along as best you can. Press right here. One, two, three, four. Zero, three, five. Zero, three, six, five. Zero, three, five, three, zero. Try it again at the same tempo. One, two, three, four. Zero. exercise uh, you can move just like the four finger exercise you can move it anywhere try it on the top two strings it's a little muddy right you can try it on the bottom two strings um, the point is is to practice it everywhere um, you know get your eyes used to looking ahead you know looking as to where your fingers are going and a good way to sort of familiarize yourself with moving up the neck in this direction, as a lot of music does that. That's it for lesson two. Thank you so much. We'll see you at lesson three. Great practicing.